Pani. Can you speak any indigenous language? No, no. Why? I cannot. I cannot give you a reason for that. I can hear a uh, chief I justice. I cannot give you a reason why I cannot speak. Uh, yeah, have you ever seen any need to learn indigenous languages? Yes, I, I think it's a need to... to it's, it will be a, a good thing to, 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 to speak a, a, an African language. But you still didn't see any need to learn it when you think it's a good thing to... No, know. I did not. You didn't see any need to learn African language? No, sir. How many staff members do you have in your office, not in the group, your office? In my staff, in my office, mm. only one receptionist, and uh, I use a, a typist that's not permanently in my service. We, as a group, use the, the typist. So how many, do you, how many are you in the office? You are three. It's you, the PA, and the typist. Uh, Yes, the receptionist and, and the typist. In your office? Yes. And then how many are black people? Uh, the receptionist is a, is a black woman. Um, have you ever visited a township? Yes. Where? When I was in Bopetotswana, uh, on many occasions we had to go into the townships. Where? In, which, which township? In Kharankua. Winterfeld. Can you speak any Abu indigenous? Bani. Can you speak? Do judges have a role to play when it comes to transformation? Yes. What role will you play to transform society as a judge? Well, sir, maybe to give you an example, uh, I've attached uh, a letter or email to my application form where a black woman appeared in my court in an opposed matter and she appeared in person and I've guided her right through the proceedings um, and at the end of the day I ruled in her favour. She wrote a comment to the judge president Maybe I can, if I can refer to that document. <clears throat> it was, uh, the lady was Busizwe Maduna. She wrote that, Your Lordship, please allow me, and this is a letter that was, an uh, email that was addressed to the uh, judge president. Your Lordship, please allow me to extend my sincere gratitude to the High Court and in particular Judge J.J. Stratum for the assistance given in my legal case. This lady was not represented, as I said, she appeared in person. By way of introduction, I'm a layman in terms of the law, but still represented myself at the High Court recently. I'm a black female, and this was my first time defending myself in a court as a plaintiff. I certainly did not have the correct terminology or know-how of when to even sit or stand. However, the judge and his team guided me through. Um, I was also grateful to some of the advocates showing me Ubuntu and informing me of what to do and when through whispers and hand gestures. Judge J.J. Stratum was courteous on all accounts. And then she ended up by saying that uh, I'm also grateful that Judge J.J. Stratum allowed me to represent myself as I could not afford to have counsel representation. This is the type of compassion that can make a significant contribution to making our society right in at least understanding that we can have access to resources such as the courts with neither fear nor retribution due to a history of economic exclusion. Do you support transformation? Definitely, yes. How does your appointment help us to transform the judiciary? So, as I've, I've already said, um, uh, 
the I'm in favor of, of, of transformation issues, but uh, I cannot say how my appointment will no, no, help you, transformation. You support transformation, therefore yes. you can't be subjective. In supporting transformation, you ought to tell us now, how does appointing you help to transform the judiciary, since you are a, a supporter of transformation? No, sir, I don't know. It doesn't help us, right? No. Appoint, appointing you it doesn't is. help us to transform the judiciary, am I right? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Nyambi. I'm covered, CJ. Thank you. Uh, Prof. Uh, uh, thank you, CJ. My question is a follow-up to Commissioner Malema's one, particularly on this letter, which makes reference to the concept of Ubuntu, because I was going to ask as to what is your understanding of that concept of Ubuntu, and also how does that concept help us to transform uh, the judiciary in terms of its functioning and also the jurisprudence that, that comes out of the court? Thank you. Commissioner, I, I don't know what is the concept of Ubuntu. Commissioner Dideza. Thank you very much, uh, CJ, and uh, good afternoon, Advocate. Yeah? Yes, good afternoon. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, on your questionnaire on seven, uh, the earlier response you gave to the question regarding uh, whether you are aware of the uh, concept Ubuntu, uh, did you say that you were not aware of that concept, or did I miss something? Pardon? Sorry? He did understand. Oh, okay. He didn't understand the concept. Yes, that, that, that's the question really I'm asking. I just wanted yes. to confirm if indeed you, you said you did not understand the concept uh, Ubuntu. Yes. Um, I'm just trying to, to understand your exposure to customary law because it seems to be at the very core of the indigenous knowledge system insofar as, um, you know, it's, it's at the core of, of, of African customary law even. Um, how did it escape you? Maybe I should ask a question differently. Your exposure to indigenous customary law is not only in relation to these two matters that um, we have just talked about. Because you seem to give me the impression that you've had exposure yes. to African that's, customary law. That's correct, yes. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jay. Thank you so much, so much, Mr. Stradom. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't want to punish you with the deeds of your father. You know, your father was a, a judge, yes. a, a very difficult judge, we must say. Um, when it comes to transformation and the things that uh, your father did uh, while he was on that bench, uh, do you think that we should trust you with transformation? Well, firstly, I'm a, a, a different person. I've got a totally, totally different personality from, from my father. I've got my own mind, and uh, I've heard about things uh, he did. I did not agree with all, all he has done. I, in fact, challenged him on a couple of occasions as a son. Uh, but I, I, I believe I, I will do my own thing, and uh, I, I've got uh, a different view altogether and we live in a new dispensation and I, I totally accept the transformation and I will assist where I can also to transform, transform the bench through my interpretation and application of the constitution 
and, uh, and, and dealing with, with, with matters uh, properly. Which specific parts that you are further committed that uh, today you are saying you don't agree or you are denouncing? Well, uh, it is a long time ago. I must uh, now uh, refresh my memory. You're talking about 20 years ago. Uh, uh, I think he became a judge in 1974. Uh, he was in Namibia for eight years, and then after that he uh, came to the um, bench in uh, Pretoria, uh, and I think he already retired in 19, well, I'm not exactly sure, uh, uh, 93 or something like that. But uh, uh, there, were, there, there was one specific matter uh, which I was unhappy with, and that related to a sentence he imposed in, uh, in Polakwane on circuit, uh, and that is the matter I specifically remember engaging with him, uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, to to get a feel why he did what he did. Uh, that, and and uh, yeah, that's all I can say at this stage. Uh, uh, other specific incidents I can't now relate or inf inform the commission about. I was trying to understand because you know, with that background. Uh, to some of us, it's very difficult to accept that you can advance the interest of a non-racial, non-sexist society when we know uh, the father that brought you in this world didn't share those aspirations. Uh, how, how do you convince us? Yeah, I, all I can say is uh, I cannot be responsible uh, for, for, for what he ha has done. Uh, he lived in a, a, a different era. Uh, he has his own own background. I have a total diff different background. I had many other influences. I became aware uh, of uh, the constitutional democracy. I, I, I know the principles. I know the constitution. So all I can say is, I al although he brought me in, in, into life, uh, I will not follow his thought uh, and his thoughts and the way he did things uh, and I must say uh, I'm not saying that all he has done was bad uh, he was uh, he was uh, a judge for on to 20, 21 years and uh, he also obviously uh, according to me uh, uh, did many or heard cases uh, uh, and work hard so I, I just can't at this stage just uh, say just negative things about him but um, uh, I will do my own thing and I will have my own mind and I have a different mind a set than his No, I take your point and as mm. I said in my intro I, I don't want to punish you for the deeds of your dad but I just want to convince myself that indeed it's not a perpetuation or continuation of something that uh, was not uh, right. Well, I, I can also just uh, take it a bit further that I've been acting since 2011. Uh, I've, I've applied the law. I've sat on many matters. I had no problem whatsoever with in, in, any person. Uh, there were no complaints that uh, I'm uh, hard or I've got an attitude that's wrong or uh, that I am uh, anti-government or anything like that. There's been absolutely nothing. I've felt that during my uh, uh, six years or seven years of, of act, on and off acting, uh, I did my best and I, uh, I had no complaints and I written many, many, many judgments. And uh, all of those judgments have been accepted. I've never been taken, well, I've been taken on appeal once, but that was up, upheld. And uh, I, I, I'm talking about approximately 100 judgments, which I've written over the years without any problems. Thank you so much, Chief Justice. Thank you, MSC, Justice Navza. Hey, 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 brothers and sisters, welcome back again to this very funny episode. I know you're holding it right and uh, tight wherever you are and staying safe. Now, <laughs> was this, you know, intentional, you know, Malema, you know, and even the way he was very comfortable as he was, you know, trying to corner the judge 
it seems that it it felt good for Malema to keep on doing what he was doing. I can just really, really frame. Can you speak an indigenous language? Repeating that. Can you speak an indigenous language? Later on, going on and trying to ask this particular gentleman whether he sees the need to study any African language. But when this particular judge realizes that this is just an this is ulterior motives towards kind of questions which are set to ask this particular gentleman whether he can be able to or he sees any need to learn um, uh, to learn African language and um, the indigenous language but I also see a very good reason as to you know why this need to and especially given the fact that the position that they were vying for the ICJ like the uh, the, 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 the representatives of uh, matters to do with justice and the law Got a, they have to have a clear picture of the kind of people that these people that they're going to represent and um, you know the core values um, uh, the, the core values you talk about the customary laws about this because because you know you cannot just assume that you can be a judge presiding over this particular group of people whom you barely understand their fabrics their way of doing things the one two and three the ubuntuism Something that he realized that at the end of it, he was going to be totally cornered. So he had to go like, no, I don't know anything to do with Ubuntu, which later on has seconded by the other, you know, interviewer, who to me again seemed that he was shocked that um, the judge under the bench, on the bench, that couldn't really understand. I think he realized that, hey, this is too end. There is an ulterior motives that is just objected, subjugated to him. But again, um, one thing that came out very clear is that it's very true that these guys they need to be able to look hey you can't just come to me from miles and miles away and trying to tell me that i can just put your house in order when you do not know which what is what what is where and where you can find these particular pieces or maybe they to, so that at least you put my house in order if you do not know maybe the ways about i mean the, the way around it so i would uh, say that it was a good no not really a good thing but i don't have to be you know biased at this particular point let me see exactly your comments in the comment section guys uh but i feel like you know it's high time that africans they're given time mandate and full responsibility to do their own things and um you know because you, if you keep on just uh uh, you know, giving the kid, let's say, uh, the, 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 protecting the kid, the, the kid will reach a point where he will not even be, be, realize that he is able to do things by himself. You always think that mom is around, that is around, it's going to do that one for me. I think it is, a, and Africans again, even Africans, it is high time that we really uh, have to mature up and start doing things and, you know, taking up responsibilities and also being accountable for our own undertakings and our doings. Now, this one also goes to the uh, Africans in the diaspora. If you happen to come across this particular channel and you, ban, you bumped across this particular channel, how about a thumbs up? Let's keep on spreading our love out there. Let's keep on spreading our authenticity, our value, and also our genuineness and also our originality. You know, Africans, we've always been sidelined. Africa has always been left aside. Uh, uh, that you know what first of all the big boys they go out there they do this and this and then we'll call you on board later on it doesn't have to be that way you see if if first of all we are endowed with resources and i will always be saying that one forgive me but i'll have to say this they will always be running you know see, you don't see any african country that goes and does the mining in any outside countries but we see many companies yeah that come and do some mining and take them on the other side. So that tells us that yes, we need also to have a very strong stand on what exactly needs to happen to our minerals. Yeah. Cheers and let's meet in the next upload. Stay tuned.